Well, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me and understand me okay with this mask on? Yes. Yep. Five by five. If you can't, just wave your hand. And if I don't see you, then just shout out. <laughs> For obvious reasons, I'm going to try to speak with this mask on today. Uh, and I'm thankful that we're all here today. What a beautiful day it is out there. Nice and warm, sunny. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, everyone who's here today uh, made it. And, uh, after being stranded in my office for 24 hours in an ice storm eight years ago, I will never criticize anyone for staying home because of fear of the weather. <clears throat> and I can tell you there's been a few times since then, Mary Jean has looked at me and says, you are not going to work today. <laughs> that uh, sleeping in a desk chair and a suit was no fun, I can tell you. But hopefully, uh, if Jerry's right, we should be able to make it home before it gets, uh, gets rough. And if we don't, then you can blame Jerry, because he is, he is the official weather watcher, and he is in charge of uh, keeping us safe. Right now, we're safe. <clears throat> but the day. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, uh, I can tell you that for sure. We had. We could walk Pat and Jimmy's out. Yeah. Yeah, I got a good one. Yeah, I'm going to get a good one. That's good to know. Well, all righty. Uh, like I said, I'll try to speak up and not mumble as much as I usually do. Um, but let's, uh, let's open with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we thank you for safe passage here to church this morning to come to your house so that we might honor you and worship you in person. Lord, we ask that uh, you would be with all of those who are not here today, that uh, your blessings would be upon them, keep them safe and warm and dry, and uh, Lord, help to keep the power on. Uh, so that we can all stay warm. Uh, Lord, we love you. We know that you care for us. Uh, you provide for us. And Lord, uh, we just love you and thank you. Honored to be in your presence here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's start with call to worship. Pat has that. It is number 393 in your Methodist hymnal. <clears throat> 393, and we'll sing through it one time. 393. Just, uh, uh, I told everyone in Sunday school, and I'll just remind everyone here, uh, according to all of the information and wisdom that I can gather from all the health professionals out there, uh, I think I am safe and not contagious. That's one reason I'm wearing my mask today. And I said that uh, my buddy Kyle, man of great wisdom, uh, when, when COVID first came out two years ago, he told everybody in his office, he goes, y'all act like I got it, and I'm going to act like you got it, and we'll just uh, proceed from there. And I think that's probably a, 
a smart way to do it, although it didn't keep him from getting it. The other folks are, but uh, anyways, uh, uh, thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for those who uh, checked on us, and uh, all in all, we are doing pretty good, I think, at, at home. <clears throat> Just a couple of announcements. I, I understand that the church delivered the PPR committee report back to the district office saying that uh, y'all had requested that I return as your pastor in June. Uh, I signed the same form. So that is in. We've got another church form we've got to uh, get in in the next month. Hopefully we'll do it in the next couple of weeks. We'll get back and, and we'll probably gather after church one Sunday in a week or two. If I can get it done this week, we may do it, just do it next Sunday. But we'll, 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 we'll see what works out for that. That we've got to do. Uh, I noticed that uh, <clears throat> what by the bins in the back, I want to remind everybody, those are the bins we've been sending to the Way of the Cross and Freedom Center. Uh, we haven't got anything in them yet. So just want to remind you, we're going to start and, and do that. And I'm going to check with my buddy Nathan with his youth group and see if they're going to help us with the hygiene kits for the Freedom Center and see, see what they're going to do with that. So uh, <clears throat> any other announcements? If anyone has noticed, or maybe haven't noticed, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> There's no glass on the altar table. Jerry and I had a little accident with the nativity scene. The nativity scene survived, but the glass didn't. So we're having that a new one cut, and it'll be ready this week. <laughs> you, you already ordered it? Oh, yeah. It's oh. going to be ready this week. They had to close down uh, Wednesday due to COVID. They had three people out, and there's not the four of them in the office. Uh -huh. So they had to close down, and I talked to Luke Thursday when this piece was supposed to be ready and he said, I'm sorry, we're closed and we will reopen tomorrow. Anytime you need glass in the future, let me know. I, I got an inside connection with that. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, well, I think we'll survive today <laughs> without the glass. Didn't even notice it. How about that? <laughs> Any other announcements? We've got a breeze somewhere. A what? A breeze. A breeze. Yeah. Candle flames are, bit, are flickering. They might be luminaria to this morning. Yeah. Maybe the vent down there. I don't know. The air's up. The heat's up. So. That must be what it is. But I've never noticed them blinking, flickering like that. Hmm. All righty. Uh, what's that? Might be the spirit of the Lord. Might be the spirit of the Lord, Pat. I'll give you an amen on that one. Spirit of the living God. That's it. <clears throat> Amen to that. Uh, I have found that uh, God shows up when you least expect it. And uh, does, doesn't always show up when you have a packed house. Sometimes he shows up when two or three folks are around. You just never can tell. Amen to that. All right, any other announcements? <clears throat> All right, uh, prayer request. Uh, we, uh, we have a, a long list of uh, prayer requests, and uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the latest editions, and uh, we'll have a, a new one for next week. Uh, i got Jody Daniels. Uh, uh, Nora Cole family, Chris Whitten, Pat's sister, Betty Harris, uh, and Pat's grandson, Nick, the Cason family, Hal Kane's mom, Nell, uh, Jackie and Leanne Buchanan, they are doing better, uh, Terry Walker, Tex, uh, <clears throat> got the Myers family, Lisa McCreelis, uh, Hal and Antoinette Williamson, uh, of course, all the school children, teachers, people that are dealing with that, uh, having lots of issues there, the Freedom Center, Center and Tommy Edwards. And uh, just a, a praise report. Uh, 
You may have noticed Mary Jean walked in today without her cane, I think. She's not, she's not dancing the jitterbug yet, but she's, she's doing better. We're very thankful for that. <clears throat> uh, any others we need to add to our list today? Harry Butler. Harry Butler. known Harry as long as I've been in Alabama. It's a long time. Mandy, Donovan, and her family, they've all got COVID again. Okay. She was on our list up here. Okay. Any others? Ganji is a teenager. He's in his early 20s. He's, early 20s. He's an old teenager. Uh, and, and his mom, Becky. They live over in Alexandria. Any others? Okay. Well, we will. Uh, lift them up uh, <clears throat> directly. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll do that now. Uh, we'll, uh, Cherry's gonna play, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll close in prayer with, with the Lord's Prayer like we, we do each week. So I invite you to join me now in a time of prayer. Let's bow our heads. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we gather here today in your presence to honor you. Lord, we love you. We're thankful for all that you have done for us. Lord, you have heard the names that have been mentioned. You know the unspoken prayers that are kept in our hearts. Lord, you know all of the other names that are being mentioned all over the world this morning. Lord, we're thankful that you care and love each one of us. Each name that's mentioned, each situation, you know what's best. And Lord, we humbly pray that you would act in their lives that your will would be done. Lord, for each one of us, we're thankful for the salvation that we have believing in your son Jesus. Lord, help us to remember that each day. And in times when we fall short, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us as we remember each day to repent of those sins. Lord, in this weather that we're dealing with today, we ask that you would watch over us and allow us to travel home safely. And for those, especially who don't have heat and power, Lord, please send those that can help them. 
Lord, for us. We ask you to help us to have a desire to draw near to you. Scripture tells us if we do that, you will draw near to us. Lord, we need that today more than ever. Thank you for allowing us to realize that and acknowledge it and have a desire to grow closer to you. Lord, I ask you to hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you now to join me in affirming our faith as followers of Jesus as we recite the Apostles' Creed found in the Methodist hymnal. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> you know, even if you have a card right in front of you, sometimes you forget to read it. So, this was a, a, a nice little card that says thank you. And I believe this card had a nice uh, donation in it. And it says, thank you again for the beautiful music for our neighborhood. We enjoy it every day. May God continue to bless you all as he has blessed us. That is Jimmy and Dolores Thompson. And uh, we have sent a thank you note to them. And uh, we're, we're thankful that, uh, uh, for their generosity. And, and I know that, uh, <clears throat> that the times that I am here during the week, I enjoy hearing the chimes. And, and I believe that I would uh, really enjoy them uh, if I lived here in the neighborhood. I grew up. 83 Church Street, about four blocks uh, from the First United Methodist Church in Bridgeton, New Jersey. And they had church chimes, and uh, we were within ears that you could hear it. And, and I remember that growing up as a kid. Very nice memories. The Thompsons send that. They've been doing it for years. They send a card and a donation every year. We've been doing that for a number of years. Very nice. Okay, we will, uh, we're not going to take up the offering, of course. We had high hopes for that, but uh, we're going to wait a while. So uh, if you would, let, let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now and thank you for all the good and perfect gifts that you have sent our way. Lord, at this time I ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings. And Lord, help us to, uh, to do good with all you provide for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Turn back to number 380. 380. There's within my heart a melody. 380. We'll sing the first and the last. One page to number 381, 381. 
I like it when Pat makes it easy on us. <laughs> Not a lot of page turning. We'll see first and last, first and last. all I got and I think that's all I got in me. <clears throat> all right. Can you still understand me everybody? Joey, it sound okay? Yeah, you're good. Okay, good deal. We're still safe. <laughs> Jerry the weatherman. That's great. Well, hello, everybody watching online. We love you. Y'all pray for us to get home safe. <laughs> According to Jerry, we're in good shape. So far, so good. That's the story of my life. All righty. So, last week, uh, last Sunday was a weird day for me. I don't know about y'all, but it was just a weird day. Got up, no church. But uh, um, I felt a little empty, but uh, I'm glad I wasn't here. Uh, I'm thankful for God for watching over me. <clears throat> but uh, started out the year uh, two weeks ago. And I read to you from Colossians, and I want to read just a few verses uh, from Colossians 3. It just, boy, there's a lot there. And I just didn't want us to forget that. Colossians 3, verse 12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. Amen. <clears throat> I uh, am sorry that I didn't get to follow up on 
that last week, but I think we all get the idea of what that scripture means. It's, uh, it's just some guidance for Christian living. When I think about our church family, I, I know that we're not perfect, but I think that uh, we do overall a pretty good job of that, and I'm thankful for that. I, uh, <clears throat> I think I mentioned earlier I had my committee on ministry uh, meeting. I had to go before the DCOM board yesterday, and we just discussed the ministry here at Horton Bend and all things considered. Uh, we're not perfect. Got a long way to go, but I think we do pretty well here. I uh, thought back several years ago. I don't know how long it's been, five, four, five, six, in that range. We were here <clears throat> on a Sunday morning, and there was eight of us. And it was sun shining. There was no rain or snow in the forecast. It was just a normal day, and there was eight of us. We had uh, lost a lot of folks to death. A lot of people had moved, and a lot of folks, some other folks had just moved on. There was eight of us. The future did not look bright for Hort Bend. Our, uh, our bank account was dwindling, and I think our idea was that uh, uh, the future did not look bright. However, we did all agree that God was not finished with this church yet. Uh, not long after that, we had a bunch of folks, many of you, who started coming here, joined us here, and uh, things are looking up. <clears throat> I, uh, I often thought back in those days, how long can we survive? What happens to a lot of churches, the, the attendance gets so small, the bank account usually follows it proportionally, and eventually churches just run out of money, and they close. Well, uh, still asking that same question, how long? How much longer are we going to be here? Well. One of my standard answers is I believe that we're going to be here as long as God wants us to be here. And uh, just like in my 59 years, I've come to realize that uh, uh, I'm going to be here as long as God wants me to be here. And I'm not talking about this church, I'm talking about this earth. So, I want to just share some thoughts with you on that question today. And, and it, it goes, I'm certain one question has been around since the time of the Garden of Eden. And that question is, how long? And you can fill, you can add a fill in the blank after that, how long blank if you'd like. Think back on how many times that I have asked that same similar question. Well, I can tell you, got the best of my dad sometimes. How much farther, Daddy? How much longer till we get there, Daddy? I'm thinking about our trip from Bridgeton, New Jersey to Rainbow City, Alabama is 856 miles. A lot of two-lane roads. There was no I-59 uh, north of Fort Payne, I don't think. It may have been north of... There was a lot of two-lane roads. <clears throat> so I've been asking that question 
my whole life and still do it from time to time. You've heard me say it lots of times. I was crying out to God 25 years ago, how long, God, how long am I going to have to continue living this lonely life? Then, you know, of course, not long after that, God sent Mary Jean into my life. She's been by my side ever since, faithfully, through thick and thin, good and the bad. And you all heard the story, but if you really knew the circumstances behind it all, uh, you'd be 100% convinced that it was all by the hand of God. I know that, I realize that, and I am thankful for it. Every day I'm thankful that God heard my cry and answered my prayer. And that answer continues every day. <clears throat> Here on our Sunday school lesson today, Warren Wearsby tells us for centuries the question, how long, has been a cry of suffering people, especially for the people of the Old Testament from Israel. Hear now some of the cries of Israel from the Old Testament. And I, and I just wonder how many times we heard these cries of the Jews while they were in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. It's just hard to imagine what that would have been like. <clears throat> Just, just, just imagine for a, for a second that we had lost World War II and we were speaking German for 400 years. About three, 325 years from now, what would we be thinking? That's what it was like for the Jews being in Egypt for 400 years. First, uh, Scripture comes from Psalm 74, a psalm of Asaph. He was probably a music director, but it says this, starting in verse 1. It says, O oh God, why have you rejected us forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pastor, pasture? Then down in verse 9 it says, We are given no signs from God, no prophets are less left, and none of us knows how long this will be. Verse 10 says, How long will the enemy mock you, God? Psalm 79 says, O God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubble. We are objects of contempt to our neighbors, of scorn and derision to those around us. How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Psalm 80 says, Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, ye who, you who sit enthroned between, between the cherubim, Shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might. Come and save us. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine, us, shine on us that we may be saved. How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? And this is a psalm. Of Ephraim, Psalm 89 says, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. How long, Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will your wrath burn like fire? And even in the minor prophet Habakkuk's book, chapter 1, Verse 2 says, How long, Lord, must I call for help? 
but you do not listen, or cry out to you violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abound. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. And even into the book of Revelation chapter 6, Starting at verse 9, it says, When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign God, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word today. Thanks be to God. Amen. I think we all heard the common theme in those scriptures. And it was, how long? You know, as we enter into the third year of COVID, an obvious question for us is, how long are we going to have to deal with this virus? I believe that many now think that it's here to stay. And that may be true. All I can say is that having COVID is no fun. And it should be taken very seriously. I think we probably all have lost someone And far too many have died because of it. So what do we do? I think we can keep praying. Wash our hands more than we think we should. Use all the precautions and good sense that God gave us. Use hand sanitizer. You know, there's a lot of questions that we ponder. How long? I'll tell you a question that I get a lot. How long is Nick Saban going to coach at Alabama? I can remember back 40 years I used to get the same questions about Coach Bryant. One that I think about a lot. How long am I going to live? I can be honest with you and tell you that I never thought that I would make it this far. I never thought that I would see 59 years old. But here I am, and, and I can tell you that every morning that I wake up, I consider it a gift and a blessing from God. Something uh, that we already talked about, you know, how long am I going to be here at a Horton Bend? You know, especially with all the changes that may or may not happen in the Methodist Church, if the General Conference ever gets to meet and vote again, never know what's going to happen. A lot of people I run into say, are you still at Horton Bend? Uh, yep, yeah, still there. Eight and a half years. They hadn't fired me yet. But also tell them day ain't over. You never, you just never know how long. <clears throat> how much longer 
Well, the earth exists until another major world war breaks out. You know, it's interesting. I was born in 1962. <clears throat> the, the Second World War had only been over about 16 or 17 years. It, it just wasn't that long ago. How long until we have another depression with food and money being scarce? That was 90 years ago. Doesn't seem that long. But my parents lived through it. My grandparents lived through it. I've heard all the stories. I've, I've seen people who never threw anything away. They uh, washed and reused aluminum foil. Tenfold, as they call it. <clears throat> when uh, the paper towels came out, they reused them and dried them. I still do the same. Not a lot, but it worked. I'll, I'll do that and hang them over my light and I'll reuse them. That may not be sanitary, it may be smart, and I'll probably get a lecture about that after church <clears throat> for my wife who has taken many, many infectious disease classes. But the fact of the matter is, is hard times may be coming. So how long is our prosperity going to last? And, and, and I want to tell you, I'm not here trying to upset or scare anyone, but I tell you, these are valid questions. <clears throat> One more thing that, that I think about, some maybe more than others. You've heard me ask this question before. How much longer will God put up with the behavior of humans? <clears throat> Thankfully, Scripture tells us that God is slow to anger. And I can say amen. Thank you, God, for that. It also tells us that God is abounding in love and wants everyone, everybody to come to salvation and know it. Jesus is their Lord and Savior. But I'll tell you what, I read the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 6. Does anybody know what's in that chapter? I didn't know what chapter it was. I had to look it up. I thought it was chapter 12, but the flood's in chapter 6. <clears throat> the uh, As I think back on that time, God got tired. He was fed up with human behavior. And he drowned everybody but Noah and his family and a bunch of animals. <clears throat> he gave humans a second chance. And we're still living that second chance today. God wants us to be saved. So the $64,000 question, at least that's what the big question was when I was a kid, before inflation and before prosperity, it's more like the $64 million question today. How long <clears throat> until Jesus comes back? Contrary to what you may have heard or read, nobody knows, and I mean nobody. Not even Jesus knows. Only God knows for sure what day that will be. Jesus warns us, John the Baptist warns us, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. 
it may be much nearer than we think. Jesus specifically warns us all to be ready because it can come in the blink of an eye. Most likely, it will be when we least expect it. And I just want to caution everyone. If you're not right with God, let me say this another way. If you're certain, and I mean for sure and for certain, that you're right with God and that you're going to heaven, if Jesus came back, as soon as I say amen today and dismiss us all to go home, then you're good. You can disregard what I'm going to say from now on. But if you're not 100% sure, and this goes for anybody out there who hears this message, I can tell you don't wait till this afternoon. <clears throat> don't wait till tonight. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week or some other time in the future. Because, folks, those opportunities may not come. I've told you this many times, but I sat back on that second row, had a hold of the pew in front of me. I was going to pull myself up and walk down the aisle. And I said, God, if you'll just give me one more week, I'll do it next week. I don't remember how many weeks in a row, but I said that, but it was a few. And I am just so thankful that I got that opportunity to stand up and walk down that aisle and profess before the preacher and before the congregation that I was saved. You may not get the opportunity. Today, today, my friends, is the day of salvation. How long? <clears throat> you know, we can ask ourselves, talk amongst each other. But only God knows for sure. I think that, uh, that we serve a loving God who's patient with us. And I tell you, I want to say amen to God's patience. I'm glad he was patient with me. Because uh, there was a time in my life and I don't know that I was worth saving. But God saw some worth in me and he waited on me. And I'm thankful for that. <clears throat> everybody here, everybody that's listening, you may be right with God and everything's good. But if you're not, today is the day of salvation. As Pat and Sherry come, I ask you to bow your heads. And dear Lord, <clears throat> if there's anyone here, I ask that you would hear their prayer. If they admit to you they have fallen short and missed the mark, that they have maybe someone who has never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, or maybe it's someone who has and has drifted away and wants to repent and rededicate their lives. Well, we know that all we have to do is, is pray that prayer and ask Jesus to come into our hearts. Be the Lord of our lives so that we might spend eternity with you. And Lord, I ask a blessing on anyone who may have prayed that prayer today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> All right, we're going to sing number 348, Softly and Tenderly. <clears throat> In the morning, we're only singing one verse. So if you need to come to the altar and pray, come on.
Amen. Anybody got a word they want to share? Better to be ready than to have to get ready. <laughs> Amen to that. Anybody else? I got to say I thank the Lord for being here today. But how long that you said, I don't know if anybody knew the song that Sherry and I play. Each step I take, I know that God will lead me. And each step I take just gets me closer home, is what that song says. And that went so along with the message. Amen to that, Pat. I just thank the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Each step I take, how about that? It leads me closer home. Amen. Anybody else? Well, I just pray now that the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit would abound in your lives today. Watch over us all as we travel home. Bless us now in the week ahead that we might be better servants for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you.